Hi and welcome back to my channel. Uh, today we're going to be having a look at something a little bit different. Um, I know recently I've been having a look at the uh, CCM and the, uh, and the Yamaha TZR amongst other bikes. Uh, this time round I'm going to be having a look at something a little bit more on the uh, sports classic kind of lineup. Uh, recently I've had a go on modern remakes of uh, the BSA Gold Star and the Royal Enfield Continental GT650. Both bikes are actually, I'll be honest with you, cracking little bikes for not very much money. Take them for what they are, they're not designed to be a sports bike, they're not designed to be a super bike, they're designed to be pure and just enjoyable basics of motorcycling. And that's exactly what they deliver. They are really good fun and really good value. Obviously, that's one end of the market. On the other end, you've got high-end brands uh, like the Bruff Superior, which is, you know, you're looking at 40 plus thousand pounds for one of those bikes. So I think we're looking in the ballpark of. Um, you've got the Triumphs, obviously uh, beautifully made bikes, mass produced and very popular and rightly so. Uh, and then you've got the resurgence of Norton. Uh, and currently they're running with the uh, 961 uh, Commando uh, SP and CR, uh, so you've got Sport Production and the Cafe Racer. I was lucky enough to get a go on one uh, recently, so this is what this video is about, to have a little look at that. Uh, so a little bit of background to Norton really, so I'm going to refer to my notes as I go along here to make sure I don't miss anything. Norton were founded in around about 1898, I believe it was, uh, by James Lansdowne Norton, hence the name, and he set up his HQ in Birmingham up in the Midlands, and his first uh, Norton motorcycle actually rolled off the production line in 1902. So we're talking 122 years ago now. The first ever Norton powered motorcycle, uh, so one with their own engine, their own built engine rather than one being bought in, was from 1908. Over the best part of the next century, Norton became one of the biggest manufacturers in the world. They are absolutely huge. Before the decline of the British bike industry saw production stop in the, well, the late 1970s, I guess. Throughout the 1980s, when I was growing up, Norton continued to be producing much smaller numbers into the mid-90s. Obviously, throughout their history, Norton have been synonymous with racing. Obviously, greats on the Isle of Man, Grand Prix racing. Uh, names that come to mind immediately are people like, obviously, Jeff Duke. Um, and when I was growing up, when you had the JPS Nortons in superbike racing, you had absolute, people I absolutely worshipped like Trevor Nation, Steve Spray, Terry Reimer, Ron Haslam, uh, Ian Simpson, to name but a few. Uh, those things were fast. And obviously on the Isle of Man, you had the legendary ride by Steve Hislop in 1992 and the white charger Norton, which were, well, that's legendary, that last, that last lap between him and Fogarty on the Yamaha. I mean, I was only, what, 13, 14 years old, but that's still in my memory now. Anyway, recently, as has probably been quite well documented in the press, the, the history of Norton has been turbulent, to say the least. And resurgence in 2008 came under the leadership of, well, Mr. Garner, or he who shall not be named, and it, unfortunately, it almost drove the mark into uh, oblivion again uh, in 2020 due to the numerous, and I'm not going to go into it, but well documented issues that the company faced. Salvation came in 2021 from an absolutely giant Indian company uh, called TVS. They invested massively into Norton. And they were looking at, not just looking at cashing in on a brand and badge engineering, but they wanted to do the real thing. They wanted to invest in the real thing. And that, basically what they've done is they've put the money into this absolutely huge state-of-the-art factory back up in Norton, uh, up in uh, Birmingham. And they've really put the emphasis on um, design and onto the, uh, onto the quality of the bikes. 
So all the bikes are hand assembled up there and tested before they leave to the dealer's showrooms and that dealer range uh, network is expanding. The uh, Commando was one of the bikes in the lineup uh, from the original rebirth in 2008, but there were a few issues of it. Uh, some might say that they were previously put together with whatever was laying around on the uh, on the workshop floor, and a lot of things were mismatched and parts whatever they could grab their hands on. Not to say they weren't nice bikes, they were, but there were issues. TVS have sought to uh, sought to address that, and everything they've re-engineered the bike, keeping the engine, but they've been made over three hundred and fifty changes to the Commando from the original uh, Garner era bike. And all those have been for the better. It's all been on quality control, making sure things are done to a specific uh, specification and how they want it. And then it's hand assembled, checked out and sent over. Anyway, let's uh, go and have a closer look at the bike and let's see what we think. Wheeling the bike out onto the forecourt, I soaked up its retro lines, modern but paying homage to the Nortons of old. The paintwork and finish look superb with beautifully pinstriped detail on the tank and seat unit. Attention to detail is noticeable with sublime hand welded aerospace level brushed billet aluminium top clamps amongst other beautifully detailed components. The Norton is not just a motorcycle, it's a piece of art. Firing the bike up, it needs a little bit of throttle to coax it into life, but once started the Commando has a deep and evocative rumble. Suspension and brakes come straight from the top drawer with fully adjustable 43mm upside down Olin's forks mated with twin Olin shocks on the rear. Brembo take care of stopping duties with twin discs at the front and a single disc to the rear. Modern EFI and ABS are the only modern luxury ride roads for doing the bike. The 270 degree crack uh, twin cylinder engine results in an uneven firing order. Basically, this is designed to give a smoother torque delivery and more direct throttle control. It's not a new thing and has been used by Norton and other marks over the years. In essence, it's the same 961cc parallel engine as the older model, except now it's built to exacting standards. In a proper nod to its heritage, the Commando engine is air-cooled, has push rods and two valves per cylinder. The real tank for Norton is on the head set. Head, uh, headstock of a handmade TIG and mid welded tubeless rear frame. The Commando makes 76.8 brake horsepower. The bike responds nicely throughout its rev range with its red line at 7,500 rpm and uh, 81 newton meters of torque at 6,300 rpm. Its claim top speed is around about 120 mile an hour. I was riding the SP version, so I had a luxury, slightly more relaxed riding position. I found the bike comfy and had plenty of room for my frame uh, at 5.11. The seat height is 810mm with a wheelbase of 1400 and the weight is 230kg. It's no featherweight but it's not designed to be. Opening up the throttle rewards you with a beautiful note from the twin low slung pipes. The pickup from the throttle is eager but it's not face melting, that would be missing the point of the bike. The engine has a few vibrations through the contact points but I felt it adds to the appeal and feeling of the classic bike. The 5 speed gearbox is smooth but you have to work your mind to use the clutch and the upshifts. It's not got a modern slip, uh, quick shifter like modern bikes. I notice it's happier on A and B roads where it gets a bit twistier and you can make use of its smooth power delivery and mid-range gears. Don't bother too much with first and second gear as nothing much happens there, but it's more fun in third and fourth. The five speed box is firm but positive, but when I'm being honest, when I started going a little bit quicker, I found myself fishing for a gear that wasn't there. Suspension and handling was impeccable. Just remember it's not a super bike and it's not designed to be ridden like one. It's confident it holds its line well, just relax and enjoy the ride. The only suspension is racing and firm but provides you plenty of feedback. I found the Dunlop Sport Mac tyres got up to temperature nicely and were predictable and grippy in all the conditions. And uh, I was very mindful of the price tag of the bike and the insurance excess so I didn't want to push them too hard. But the Brembo brakes were absolutely brilliant and saved me from coming off when a pheasant decided to run in front of me. Around town, the Norton's docile and pretty well behaved, although I feel it could feel a tad cumbersome at lower speed and needs a bit of time to get around in tighter spaces, as I discovered parking the bike up at Brooklyn in the bike sheds. 
The view from the rider's seat uh, was of clear, simple dials and the mirrors gave me good vision that I could see what was going on behind me. I will say that I felt the display could have maybe done with a gear indicator, but again, that's just me and it's not a deal breaker. I do think that the switch gear, whilst completely functional, feels a tad out of touch with the rest of the bike and although it does everything as it should, it felt a little budget compared to the rest of the bike. Oh, and the horn being situated above the indicator switch really did my head in, but that's something you get used to in time. Another, albeit minor grumble from me, is the side stand. I think it's located too far forward and it's a pain to get down, so beware of inadvertently knocking the bike into gear uh, when you're trying to put the side stand down. Also, the foot rests, whilst comfortable, aren't particularly great at springing down. They, they're not spring returns, so if you knock them up, it can be a pain to get it back down, especially if you're moving. So that's something to bear in mind. It could be frustrating and distracting equal measure. Economy-wise, the Norton is fitted with a 15 litre tank and offers a not to be sniffed at average of around about 40 miles per gallon, so that equates to about 120 miles range. So it's not horrendous. So, there you have it. It was a rather damp ride, but it was an enjoyable ride. Um, sorry I was rushing a bit through my commentary there, I was very mindful I didn't want to make the video too long. Um, I suppose looking at it, the thing you've got to keep in mind about the Norton is the exclusivity aspect. And there's no lie about it, you don't see many of them about. Yes, rivals such as the Triumph um, Froxen RS and the Yamaha XSR900, which is a personal favourite of mine, offer more power and less weight and significantly less money. Uh, the Commando SP that I was riding starts at 16,499 on the road and, the, uh, and with the CR at 16,999, I believe it is. But the Norton just makes you feel special. It turns heads and it has that certain, I don't know, je ne sais quoi about it. As I mentioned before, I, I reviewed recently the uh, BSA Gold Star and Royal Enfield Continental GT650. I haven't had a chance to do a video on those yet, but I hope to do that soon. In my opinion, uh, the Enfield gives a similar emotion to the stripped back sensation of motorcycling, but it's made to a budget and ultimately that shows. Think of the Norton, if you will, as a two-wheeled Rolex or a proper Gibson Les Paul. Yes, you can get an Accurist that looks like a Rolex and you can get a Baldwin Les Paul, but it's not quite the same, is it? It's not quite the real thing. It's hard not to get caught up in the prestige of the, uh, of the name and the history of Norton. The Commando is a real feel-good bike to ride, I honestly think. If you don't rush it, just let it do its thing and enjoy it. The character and feel of a bike is really what makes it, and the high quality of a build just makes it feel that bit extra special. No, as I said, it's not perfect. I know I have said the switch gear, uh, the side stand and foot pegs can all be a bit annoying, but don't let that put you off uh, having a go. Just go and swing, sling your leg over one and see what you think. Uh, the Commando, it looks great, it sounds great, and it feels great to ride. The big question is, would I have one? If a budget was an issue, was not an issue, and I was in the market for a high-end modern classic, then yeah, of course I would. Would I be tempted by the rivals? Yet yeah, again, of course I would, but would they have the same feel-good factor? Go on, go and have a go on one. It'll give you a proper classic bike experience uh, with the benefit of modern reliability, and the two-year warranty gives you that extra bit of uh, peace of mind, I suppose. No, it's not cheap, but when was exclusiv exclusivity ever cheap? Anyway, that's my, that's my thoughts on the Norton. I suppose if I'm giving it a rating, I'd say around about eight out of 10. I really enjoyed it, it's a great bike. There's a few little imperfections here and there, but it doesn't stop it from being great fun. So a massive thanks to the guys at PNH Motorcycles and Crawley for letting me out on the bike. And a massive thanks to Mark Fielder and the guys at Brooklyn's Motorcycle Team for letting me down to the museum and for the photographs, letting me take the photographs from the banking. It's been a great day. And as I say, if you guys ever get a chance to go and visit Brooklands in Weybridge, do. It's an amazing place to visit. Some great exhibits and it is absolutely steeped in history. Anyway, my cup has gone. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope to see you all soon. Take care. Bye.